Hello, I'm Dr. Jackie Borman, and welcome to the Purdue Dairy Digest. Today we will talk about a recent presentation given by Dr. Jesse Goff on hypocalcemia in dairy cows. Dr. Jesse Goff from Iowa State University gave a thorough webinar about why cows become hypocalcemic and how to reduce the impact of low blood calcium in the transition dairy cow. Probably every dairy farmer and certainly every veterinarian has seen a cow with clinical hypocalcemia or milk fever. And biologically, we can understand that prior to the start of lactation, there is very little calcium required for the cow, and immediately following calving, there is a considerable increase in the amount of calcium needed for milk production. While the incidence rates of milk fever are relatively low, subclinical hypocalcemia is still very common on dairy farms, with an estimated 50% of cows having subclinical hypocalcemia. When a cow has reduced calcium in circulation, parathyroid hormone is released, which increases calcium uptake from the intestine, increases calcium release from the bone, while also reducing urinary calcium loss. All of these adaptations can occur within minutes to hours to try to regulate calcium concentrations in the blood. Feeding a negative dietary cation anion difference diet, or DCAD diet, to close-up cows works by increasing the parathyroid hormone's ability to bind to its receptors throughout the body, allowing for increases in serum calcium. While there are many anion sources available, chlorides are more acidifying than sulfates. Dr. Goff recommends that in the calculation for DCAD, sulfur should have a coefficient of 0.6, as it is 60% as effective of it for acidifying the blood as chlorides are. However, the most important thing with feeding negative DCAD diets is to monitor urine pH. Whereas blood pH changes very minim minimally, urine pH can go from 8 or above in a non-acidified diet to lower than 5 when cows are overly acidified. We are looking for small changes in blood pH that will make the parathyroid hormone more active we monitor this by measuring the large changes in urine pH. Dr. Goff recommends a range of urine pH of 5.9 to 6.5 to ensure that cows are properly acidified. The risk of overacidifying a diet includes reducing intake, which is not the goal for close-up dry cows. Other minerals that are not included in the DCAD calculation but also impact blood calcium include phosphorus and magnesium. High levels of phosphorus actually reduce the active form of vitamin D and reduce calcium absorption from the intestine. Therefore, it is recommended to feed between 0.25 and 0.31% phosphorus on a dry matter basis to close up cows. For magnesium, ruminants only absorb magnesium through the rumen wall. And magnesium is required for the parathyroid hormone receptors to increase calcium concentrations from both the intestine and bone. Therefore, magnesium concentrations should be 0.4% and the source of magnesium should be available to allow for absorption across the rumen wall. Dr. Goff also mentioned the use of zeolites, which will bind calcium and stimulate the cow to increase her calcium concentrations through resorption from the bone and increased efficiency of absorption from the intestine. There is limited research on these products in the U.S., however, they have been used in, the, in Europe and other places around the world. And it appears that they also bind magnesium and phosphorus. There may also be some palatability issues with zeolites because of having to include maybe up to a pound in a close-up dry cow diet, with one study reporting reduced dry matter intake. However, zeolites do bind calcium, and the limited studies done in the U.S. show that they increase blood calcium around calving, so they may be a potential option in the future. Dr. Jesse Goff has been conducting research on hypocalcemia in dairy cattle for decades. His contributions to this area of research have certainly increased our understanding of calcium homeostasis and have led to the development of several products to reduce hypocalcemia in dairy cows. Staying on top of minerals in close-up dry cows and urine pH monitoring are the important factors to try to minimize the negative effects of hypocalcemia in our dairy cattle. If you are a subscriber to the podcast, can you do us a favor and rate us in iTunes? If you're not a subscriber, become one today, and you can listen to this podcast at your own time. Thank you.